Week three is here and I'm afraid there's not going to be a massive update for today because we've got football kicking off at three, then we've got Doctor Who followed by Eurovision. I'm going to be in front of the TV for pretty much the whole day. So I don't think I'm going to work on the bongo, but I would like to go over my plans for this week and what I aim to get done. You can see behind me the bongo is looking pretty much done. In fact, I'm not sure there'll be much to do besides the interiors of each of the cockpits. So I think I won't be working much, if at all, on the bongo this week. The focus is going to be on the base and we're going to get some greevelins, some slopes, use up all the slopes that we just ordered and the cones and try to make it look as under the sea like as possible. We're going to add some fish. I do want to add a nice little family of fish swimming past as well as one of the bigger fish at some point that might trickle over to next week. But that is the aim for this week. So I hope you enjoy and on to day 14. It's day 14, but you know that you've seen that on screen and we're actually going to get some work done to the base of the bongo today. I've finished my Tales of the Empire two part videos. Definitely check them out if you enjoyed the series because I really enjoyed the build and my aim for the base is to get a few slopes down to outline where I want these spires because I don't think I want as big a spires as I did say a week ago when I made the last video because the bongo itself is meant to be quite big. I still might have a biggish spire at the front that is avoiding because it's more in the foreground. But in the background, especially if I'm working with the bigger fish I want to make later on, I don't want the spires to be massive and to dwindle the size of the fish. So the spires are going to be a little smaller and I'm going to make use of the bar elements, which are quite thin, quite slim and they can be giant spires in the distance. So I'm interested to see how this is going to work. I have no idea how I'm gonna go about this. I'm gonna slap some bricks down. If I like it, they can stay. If not, I'm gonna destroy it. Pretty much how I built the front line, the coastline on the edge there. And then as we work further back, I'll know how many bricks I have to slope up the back or perhaps I'll just angle a plate. Perhaps I can even just build a giant rock wall using some of the stone parts that I've taken out from the Lego City. And there is a massive Lego City update coming. It's going to be Star Wars 5, so definitely stay tuned for that. The city's going in a whole new direction, but it doesn't mean that everything has to go. But that is a video that probably by the time this video goes out, might already be out itself. So check that out and I'll be back when I've updated the base. This is what a day's worth of progress looks like. And as you can see, I've added some greenery to this model to spice it up a bit. We gotta get some color in there. And there is a path down here of two by twos with rocks. The reason I've used two by twos is because I'll be able to get some sort of droid hands or the neck pieces that Star Wars use for their IG droids. And the fish moulds should clip straight into them no problem and be able to position on them two by two. So I'm hoping to have a school of fish swimming through here. I'm still not sure about the rock work at the back and you can see that this area is a bit bare but that is because the bongo is going to go right here and rather than use up a bunch of pieces here that I might need later on especially for the back I'd rather just have a few little pieces like that one lonely stud and I've even included a pile of two by fours. Did anyone else used to do that with Jenga bricks when they were little or is that just a me thing? They look like little aeroplanes stacked on top of each other. But I'm very happy with how this has come out. Some of these greeneries do have bars in them just for some extra security and we've got this nice long one at the back which as I said the bongo will be here, so it's filled it out nicely, and then we'll have the towel going between them in the middle. I'm very happy I did manage to get a stack on this column here, and I think it's looking really, really cool. As for what else is going to be done this week, I would like to get perhaps a bit more colour, perhaps some colourful stones somewhere along the base of these. So I'm going to dedicate a day to just mixing up some studs because I know how long that can take. These studs are just so small and they don't really take up much of an area i've used a few around the coastline here and i just want to put a few colorful ones somewhere around it not too much to distract from the bongo but enough to break up this sandy tan color and besides that we've got to work on the back i'm definitely looking towards some of the gray slopes i'm not quite sure how steep i'll make that i probably won't make it that steep i'll just slope it up until it disappears at the back. So the left side is going to be steeper than the right hand side, but that is my plan for the week. And hopefully by the end of the week, 
this is looking really really cool i mean compared to what it looked like beforehand i think it's already looking really really good hello there so i've just edited yesterday's video and i realized i didn't really explain why i did anything or what specifically i use i just turned on the camera and i think i was just so tired yesterday I showed it off and that was it. So today we're gonna to be taking a closer look at the base. I'm not quite sure if I'll be building anything because I've got a really cool mock for tomorrow. I can tell you, you've already seen the video. It's the X-Men Sentinel and I do want to dedicate at least a full day to finishing that off before tomorrow because I'm really excited to show it off. And my aim for this part of the video is just to go through what I built yesterday and explain why some pieces are where they were i mentioned about the jenga tower but that was about the only thing and break down how i built all the different leaf towers and the spires that you've already seen so i'm going to get straight into it and show you around the base of the mock so once again we have the base of the mock the underwater sort of sandy leafy yeah i don't really know how else to describe this really so the leaf bars that i very very briefly showed off have one of these six long bars in them and i've stacked the leaves sort of upside down every other leaf some of them are well they're all unique that's definitely for sure some of these follow a pattern some of these are just randomly placed that's to try and get everyone to look as unique as possible i haven't really had a pattern but you can see just to keep a consistent shape I flipped nearly every other leaf just to get some wide bits, some thin bits, and I think that's really done well. So they go into these one by one bricks, either cones or round bricks underneath them, and that is what is supporting all of these. But I also have some spires built using bricks, some one by one bricks. I had an abundance of these one by one bricks. I no longer have an abundance. A lot of them have been used in this mock, but I did have an abundance, which is why I've used so many of these and just placed a leaf every couple of them. Once again, still no pattern. I mean, this one's got three at the top here. So there really is no pattern to how I've placed this. I just wanted it to look as natural as possible. And whilst some things have a pattern, when we're looking down at this scale, there really isn't much of a pattern to find. Now, I did say about the Jenga tower in yesterday's recording, and I do really like how that's come along. It's quite simplistic. It is hidden by the bongo, but it just fills up what otherwise is an empty gap. And I think for this column holding the bongo, I'd much rather it be secure than look good. So once again, it's hidden. I'm probably just going to keep it as it is and I'm very happy with the coast. There are a few of these one by ones and other bricks. You see there's two bricks there with a leaf and three to the left just to add a few shorter spires because not everything will be tall. And I've tried to build these leaf columns here on these rocks that are already breaking out. I guess they're high points in the model. They're not all on the highest points, but much like here, we've got a few bricks and plates building up with even a few tiles dotted around so it made sense for leaves to want to grow out of there and some underwater plant life to try and reach the sunlight from the highest point it wouldn't make sense if we have a few columns around here and the leaves were branching out of this two by two plate down here because it just it just doesn't look right i'm not sure if that's how it naturally goes or if they just sprout out wherever they can but that's my reasoning behind why they're on a few of these peaks and i have added this nice trout which i did mention and i mentioned about the fish but i didn't mention it leads to this little cave down here which is what i'd imagine is where the fish will take shelter if they need a break from swimming it's sort of a halfway house between where they've been and where they've gone because of course there's always a bigger fish and it's a dangerous world for the little ones. As well as that, I've added all of the slopes and cones that I got in my order. You can see I've used a mixture of the 1x2 slopes and also the 1x2 cheese slopes I've added, which just add a nice break of the terrain and stop all the slopes looking the same. But there are a bunch of these 1x2 slopes around. I can't remember how many there were in the order but all of them are here as well as all of the cone pieces 
you can see that not only do the leaf columns have the cone pieces at the bottom, but I've also put a few loose just to act as the sharp pointy rocks, which I'd imagine Naboo's underwater is probably filled with because it definitely doesn't look like the safest place. And especially with all the fish coming around, there's probably some of these columns that the fish have modeled just to protect themselves from the bigger fish. But I don't know if any of that is even making sense. I'm very happy with how it's coming along. We've got this tall tower that I guess I should probably show off because it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven bricks tall. And I think that does look pretty cool. Once again, hidden by the bongo, so it had to be taller. And then for the back, which I'll probably start work tomorrow. I've mentioned about colorful rocks. I do want to add a bit of color and probably some different coral life and that to it. I'll probably add that tomorrow. And then at the back, I'm just going to have slopes sprouting off from this and have a nice, I guess about 45 degree angle slope. I did say that that would be the steep side. It wouldn't because of how long that is, that would be the narrower side, the less steep side. And the steep side is actually going to be bits like this that need the steeper slopes. But I think that's going to look really, really cool. You can see there's a bit of space underneath a few of these plates, if my camera wouldn't mind focusing. And I might add a few of the colorful rocks under there, just add a bit of detail and hide some away for the closer angles. But I like that when I step back, it really is all coming together. And it also adds a lot of depth because at different angles, you can see different spires and columns are lining up with the different ones in the back and I like how it's given the bongo even more of that realistic feel like you can pan across and follow the bongo through the underwater terrain as I said I'm probably not planning on adding much to this because the bongo is covering it and hopefully that's given a much better look than yesterday of course this is more of a behind the scenes video so I'd like to explain why I do certain things and give you a closer look than you might get in the showcase. But it's coming along very, very nicely. Definitely let me know what you think down in the comments and I'm very happy with how it's going so far. It's time to add some color to the base of the bongo because I'd just like to add a bit of life, a bit of coral, perhaps have a miniature reef going on. I mentioned the school of fish. I'd like to have a bit of color around that area and just bring a bit more life to this mock. It's quite sandy, it's quite tan, it's quite boring almost. I know it's underwater, so there's not much color I'm gonna get, but just like when I built the Moss Esper mock, the mock Esper, if you will, I added a few different creatures, tried to get the long necks in, tried to get different studs to represent Jawas and all the different characters. And of course, we had that massive stud wall, which represented over a thousand different creatures packed into that arena and that's what I'd like to get across with this mock so hopefully they don't look too out of place I don't think I'll be using any metallic colors or any of the bright purples but I just want to use some dull perhaps some of these softer tones will come across a bit well in this mock and hopefully we can get it looking like there's some actual underwater life other than just the big fish we might add at the end. So hopefully this goes well. And once again, I'll be back with another update. I may have got a bit distracted and ended up building the very first fish for the display. You can see I built some sort of jellyfish. There's only four tentacles, but these were in the bags that me and my fiance got for world build day last year from the Lego store. And I haven't put them to use and really wanted to. I think we got a few extras in the Halloween VIP bag as well, and I still haven't used them. We've also got a bit of coral from the summer VIP bag. So I'm making use of all my freebies finally, and I've added a bit of color. You can probably already see a few of these studs dotted around. Actually, this is the great place to show you because not only can you see a few studs dotted around, which just brighten up the model, bring a bit of color into it, and I think, make it look really, really cool. But you can also see there's a dead plant. Perhaps it's just a budding plant, something that hasn't grown yet, but it looks a bit killed off compared to some of the greener leaves. And I've also dotted them around. I realize there are a few other spikes and my explanation for the leaves growing out was because they were the high points of the rocks. So how come there were none sprouting out of here? Well, perhaps they had, but they had died off and started growing elsewhere like right next to it so you can see where the school of fish will be coming through 
and there is a bit of coral at the back we've also got a jellyfish which doesn't interfere with the actual bongo itself the bongo sits right here and there's enough space for the jellyfish to be swimming past completely unfazed by the giant submarine going through it i still want to add a somewhat bigger fish down here so i'll keep that in mind for not whacking anything in this corner there's a few more bits just under where the bongo would be i haven't left it too bland and i've actually added two slopes to this giant pillar in the middle because it just felt empty compared to everything else so i'm very happy with all the color that i've added and i look forward to finishing this up i think the only things left to do now is to populate it with fish i don't really know what else we can do with the base i'll have a think on it tonight and let you know in the morning but i think we're coming close to the minifigures i've just got to polish it off in the odd space here and there but the base is looking really cool oh yeah we've still got the slopes at the back okay perhaps tomorrow we'll start the slopes at the back i completely forgot about that but as for the foreground it's pretty much finished already so i'm going to get my slopes ready for the background and hopefully we can tackle it i'd say in two days if we can get it done by the end of the week that is definitely a job well done but if we can get it done over the next few days that'll be really really good so let me know what you think of my color that i've added just a few blues greens pinks as i said this morning it's just these softer tones of colors nothing too bright to break it up although saying that and then we look at the jellyfish and the bit of coral they are quite bright but they're nice soft colors that don't necessarily break it up and the green definitely hides them a bit better but it just adds a bit more color stops them looking gray and yeah i could have done all sandies and grays and light tan dark tan colors but i wanted my model to stand out a bit from all the others you see so i did a bit of color a few animals will be on their way and I'm very happy with the result. It's day 17 and today we are going to be building the slopes behind all of the other colourfulness that we have added. So hopefully this goes really well. I don't expect to be finished today. If I am, that would be very, very nice. But I've got a few other things to do for a few future videos. So if we can get half of it done today, half of it done tomorrow, I think we're still on track to finish by the end of the month. Now, I have set myself a new challenge because i started the first video two days early and only had five updates in that if i can finish this whole project in 28 days honestly i don't think i could ask for much more so i've now got that time restraint in my head honestly if i need more time i'm just going to give myself more time it's not the end of the world but if i can finish it in them 28 days i think that'll be a huge success so i'm going to get all of the slopes from my city which once again There'll be another update out by the time this video is to do with Star Wars. The city's moving in a whole new direction. Check that out if you haven't after this video. But let's see what I get done with the slopes. So just before I have lunch, I would like to update you on what I have done so far. And you can see somewhat how I want the slopes to go up. I don't want them just to be bricked together and form one cohesive slope. I just want to have a few caps in them, even like this little crack here, just for some sort of fish or sink to be living on as you would expect to see it underwater you can see there's also a gap there we've got just seemingly random slopes but they're all placed with their own individual purpose and they all look like one wall and it doesn't look like i've just randomly placed them like with my x-men scrapyard but at the same point it doesn't look like they've been stacked on top of each other to form some sort of a ramp and actually whilst i was putting these together I watched David's from Solid Brick Studios old review of the Star Destroyer that was released June 2014 and it so reminds me of the new one. So definitely stick around, subscribe for June 1st where I will talk about all the new Star Wars sets and actually all the new sets in general. There is over 120 sets coming out. That's crazy. There is so much Lego coming out and I will be picking up some on June as well. So Stick around if you want to see my haul and review of them. But so far, I've also built a back wall for the rock work and it does look pretty nice. I mean, it's mostly bricks. You can see I've added the odd slopes to break it up. And I think when we look from the back, they need to go. I didn't remember that I used a bunch of white bricks. I should have a few more black bricks now that I've sorted my Lego. The last mock I built, the mock Esper pod race, was before I sorted my bricks, so that is why there are white bricks instead of black at the bottom. You couldn't see it from the front. The front 
is all black bricks and I've actually stole it like the diorama so I guess I know what I'm going to do one of the day. I'll do that after I've done the slopes because the slopes don't actually go over the rim so it's quite easy to change but I've added the slopes to it so that it breaks up the pattern a little bit. We don't just have these big panel pieces and some bricks forming the wall but we also have a few gaps back here I'm not sure I'll use any Easter eggs inside of them because you can't really see through most of them. And I really like how broken up this corner looks. So I might end up adding a few more bits. I could always, if I wanted to, take off these two panels and give it a little interior with perhaps another big fish or something on the inside. And I've also got these two pieces to act as supports if I do end up needing them. Support all the slope work because... I guess as long as I've got some of these big slopes, they can also support it. But a lot of it is going to be quite flimsy once the whole wall is built. So that is what I've done so far. I hope to get a few more slopes down today. I'll probably end up trying to finish about this section. If I finish this third, I think we're going on well for the rest of the week. So I guess I'll be back once I've done a few more slopes. It's now the end of the day. I forgot to do an update after lunch, but even if I did do an update... I didn't get to do any slopes because I was actually editing a bonus video for today. So I'm quite happy with all the slope work that I've done. And you can see, of course, we've got some slopes out of system here and angled pretty much whichever way they are going. You can see over there, I replaced the supports with some yellow inverse slopes, which just allowed me to play with the height a little bit. And we are going to have a little platform here that might see some life when we start adding the minifigures. Of course, we've got the one jellyfish there already, but I'm quite happy with how natural I've got this rock work looking. So I'll go over it in a bit more detail once I have finished it, but that will be tomorrow's job. It's already late enough again. It's coming up to 10 o'clock. I'm just finding whatever time I can to add a few more bricks to this project, but it's almost complete and I'm very happy with what I've got done. So tomorrow we will be continuing the rock work, but you'll see it in just a moment. Today is the day we will be finally finishing off the sloping of the display of the bongo of the big mock for me. That is a lot of offs, but hopefully we will get all the slopes done today. I don't suppose it will take too long and Hopefully if we do, I still need to sort out the base, which has a few random white bricks, which again, hopefully I've got enough black bricks to replace. I might have to pile up a few plates if I don't, just to get it looking clean from every angle. And I really liked what I was doing yesterday with the gaps in the slopes, which just give it a bit more detail from behind. A lot of mocks from the back don't look good. And it's because all the detail has been put into making it look good from one angle. But I really do want it to look at least somewhat decent from behind with a few gaps in the rock. And, you know, if you were to take a cross section of this rock and cut it straight through the middle, it's not going to be a giant block of rocks. There's going to be a few gaps. There's going to be a few other little hidey holes, perhaps some with a bit of life in it, some sort of sea plants or sea creatures in them. So that is really what I want to get across with this mock. And I think it's doing well so far. I mean, I guess today will tell, but it does look really, really cool on display. I've still got the towels to do, which I am probably going to look at which one was voted for most. I can't remember if I did a community poll or comment. So I'll see if anyone commented on that video. And if not, I'll probably just go with the ones I was going to go with anyway, because I do think they look really cool and I've got to prepare them. So that might be tomorrow's video. I don't know if I'll leave that till next week. I might just focus all in on the base because I've got a load more slopes to place down and I want to take straight out a little bit. I'll probably add some colourful rocks, but... I guess you'll see in just a minute. Just like that, the rock work is done. Well, I say just like that, it was a few different transitions for you at home. It definitely was a lot of hard work and a lot of slopes. I don't think I have any two by one by slopes left in my collection. I've got a few of these taller ones because as I said, I weren't building it too high. And initially I said about having a platform in the middle about raising it to about yay height, sloping it off and then continuing it. I did not have the slopes for that whatsoever, but I did manage to get my little platform in there. So perhaps we can fit something on there later on. Perhaps we can take this jellyfish here 
and sit them on the platform. It's a nice sturdy platform. You can put quite a bit of force on it. Unlike half of these slopes, there is a loose slope somewhere under this bunch here that just fell in and it's so fragile I didn't want to risk trying to grab it. I didn't really need that slope. I can't remember what slope it is but somewhere in one of these gaps there is a grey slope that has just fallen through and thankfully you can't see any of the yellow supports I don't think through the bricks which also has worked out quite nicely. Let's just give you the other angle to make sure there are no gaps left in the slope work and it does look pretty clean there are a few gaps going around the side and also around the back you might be able to see just a handful of them and I think there's one or two on the other side but I'm very happy with the progress over the last few days as I said Tomorrow is pretty much dedicated to doing this, but I've got a few other projects again I want to do tomorrow, so not a massive day, but I think it will round out the video well, transferring this from black bricks to white, I mean from white bricks to black bricks. As you can tell, it's been a long day, I'm happy that all the slope work is over, and next week might be the final week, only four weeks, I mean that is still quite long considering I've done something every single day, but the bongo is almost done. I think the only thing left to do now is the outline of this mock. Tomorrow we've got to fit the minifigures in, get some sea creatures, potentially do a big fish down in the bottom corner. What else have we got to do? The interiors of the bongo. We've still got to do the towels. I haven't managed to do the towels this week. Again, let me know down in the comments if you watched last week's video what you think I should do about the towels and that will probably be done early next week. We've got another five or so days. I'll probably add an extra day on just to be sure. And then obviously it will take me a day to edit the showcase of this mock. And now that I've already done a showcase with Mock Esper, hopefully I can show it off a bit better. And I know sort of what angles look good and which angles look, well, less good so i hope you are enjoying this video one more day and that is just for the outline so let's waste no time and get into the final update of this video we have reached the end of week three all we have to do is change one of the colors on the base it's an easy fix but first off if you've made it this far into the video let's see how many of you have made it why don't we go down into the comments and let me know your favorite color you don't have to put anything else let me know your favorite color just to confuse everyone else who clicks on this video. I'll do the same. I'll whack my favorite color in the comments and it's just a little bit of fun to see who makes it this far into the video. But now let's get rid of all the white bricks. It should be fairly simple. Next week we will be working on the cockpits, on the animals, on the, on the towel. I've completely forget about the towel. I need to jot that down somewhere so I don't forget it. But we're going to do all of that next week so don't forget to stay tuned, like if you do enjoy the video and subscribe so you don't miss out on the next update as well as the showcase. If you're watching these videos you can't miss out on the official reveal. So I hope you enjoyed this video but let's get the base sorted. When I'm moving it over to my desk I always want to be recording just in case I drop it but then again if I'm recording would something go wrong because it's on camera? So I've lined up the base that I will be changing. You can see behind these bricks right now, perhaps I should have brought the light over here. There are some white bricks, so I will change that to black, but I still don't have enough of the black pieces. You might be able to see a bit better around this side, especially if I can move the light over a bit, that I've actually switched it up to gray for underneath the rocks. Now the plates will still be black on the top. I still like the look of that black border going the whole way around. But this is to keep in the sandy sandstone rocks at the front. And then at the back, we're going to have these gray bricks. Now when I say it's going to be easy to make the change, I'm not sure if I've got a brick separator to hand, but I do. Now I've got my trusty brick separator. All I've got to do is pop off the plates that are holding down the white bricks and this is actually quite a long plate and then pop the bricks off from underneath and just do this the whole way around so look there we go we can do our first bit and then we want to grab the plates that we've used and just whack them on top and i think 
that will make this mock look a lot cleaner. Hopefully you're able to see most of that. You'll just make it look a lot cleaner than with the white edges. So once I've done that, we'll take one last look at the base of the mock, the Naboo Bongo, and then I'll wrap up the video. You should have seen me with the brick separator. I was like Speedy Gonzalez, just popping off, popping them off, and then going through the bricks, popping them off, and then putting them all on. And I think that looks so much cleaner. I would have loved to have also perhaps stacked a few plates for the back here, some black plates that is, rather than having the rock work. But I don't think it looks too bad, the rock work coming through. I might be tempted to add the odd slope on here. And as you see, I wasn't able to place this plate down fully because we've still got the white bricks in the corner that overlap. That's how the outside of this is so stable. They're basically all connected to one another the whole way around. There is no chance of any of these popping off. And it also makes it so much easier when designing my next mock because I've already got mostly a black base and I won't have to worry about not getting any of the white in when I show you the mock because it does off put it a little bit. I mean, it creates a nice distinction between this and the table, even with the mat. That black border just helps to separate the build from whatever I'm displaying it on. And to give you another angle of the greenery and the rock work that we've done throughout, this is actually a really cool angle. This will probably end up being the thumbnail. You've probably already seen it and recognized this angle, but I do really like all the work that we've done and we haven't even touched the bongo, well, we've barely touched the bongo this week. So I'm gonna do the other two sides and then we'll be back with one final look. Oh, look at me go with all the plates. Some people say that building Lego is where the most fun is. I think there's also some fun to taking down Lego and taking apart mocks because it's just fun to see how quickly you can try to pop off all the bricks and the plates and oh, one more. Okay, I think this one's connected, but now let's get the gray bricks on. And you can also see just how many one by eight white bricks that this has given me to use elsewhere. I don't know exactly where I'd use them. They would have been great for a tentative mock or something like that, but I don't really know where I'd put them to use, but at least I've got them if I need them. I'm pretty sure I remember my last words being, let's get straight to the base being done or something along that. And then I ended up having way too much fun. So you basically saw the whole process of me debordering and rebordering the base. And honestly, it hasn't taken so long. There is a big project that I'll be doing today, so I'm afraid that is all. Before we go, let's take one last look at the base of the mock. Now, this is looking really, really cool. You can see the rock work not only breaks up itself, but also breaks up along the base. Let's get a bit more light on it. And this does carry the whole way around the base of the model. I do try and break it up with some light gray, but I feel like there's a lot of light gray up here. So it's mostly dark gray around the base and it is quite sturdy. It's sturdy enough to turn the thing around by the base of the rock work, but I wouldn't risk touching any of the pieces higher up. We've also got this corner here and then it goes back to black for the rest of the model. Now, whilst I was editing yesterday, I noticed a yellow brick could be seen through the rock work. So I have gone and just placed a little slope whereabouts was it now? This is the hard part, trying to find where it was. It was here, I believe. This little gap on the right did have a bit of yellow seeping through. So I've just placed another slope next to the old one, a nice one by one cheese wedge. And that has covered it up quite nicely. And I think over here, if we looked down into this hole from this side, you could also see one of the yellow support slopes. But I'm just not going to show off that angle. I thought it'd be a bit easier than trying to cover it because there's no real way to cover it without covering the whole hole. So I'm very happy with how it's turned out. Next week, we will be finishing off the bongo and then showing off the complete mock. I think adding something like this to the bongo, I could have just built the bongo, had it done probably about now, had it done a week early without doing anything to the base and just have the ship. But this adds some storytelling to the bongo itself, builds up the atmosphere. And though it's looking a bit bland underneath the bongo, as I say, the bongo will be here. And in the rest of the underwater area is absolutely filled with 
animal life, with plant life, and there's many more fish yet to come, especially the bigger one, smaller, bigger one, the bigger, smaller one, that'll be down in the corner. So do please stick around. Don't forget to comment your favorite color, and may the bricks be with you always.